You say you're against 50-50, yet you're a feminist. Yes. Isn't feminism supposedly about equality? Uh, yeah, I think it is equality. And once we, you know, as women, do you have more equality? then it should be more 50-50. But we what do you mean by more equality? Yeah. Yeah. So, sure, because sure. of all the law, you know, we have everything in America. Oh my gosh, you know? of course. No, I'm not saying that we're like living in Iran or something like that. Iran. Or India, right? Mm -hmm. Which are just like God. so awful against women. But I still think that there are issues in this country against women, absolutely. And abortion being one of them, which I know is like a tough subject. But, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm totally... Pro-life, pro-choice, it's up to you. Privilege, I just Tony. think that as a what woman, you are, let's if stop. I go hold into... Hold on, hold on. You can pause it, Deli. He, that's a privileged woman right there. So she's saying, by the way, she's a feminist when it's convenient to translate for you. She's against the 50-50 in relationship until there's more equality for women. What is she talking about? What, what do you want? So when she's confronted, like, okay, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? What, what, what do you need to happen here that's not happening already? Oh, abortion. Right? That's the, the talk is spews out. Just That's all they know. Equality. Oh, if I want to go have an abortion. Honey, again, I don't, I don't know why I have to explain this to you, but an abortion involves another person. That's not just about you. First of all, it oftentimes is about three people, right? Not oftentimes it is. It's about you. It's about the person that you had sex with to create a third person. And it's about the third person living inside you. So this idea that like, oh, this is what women's health care looks like. Oh, and this is female autonomy. And this is what, you know, women being pushed down in society is just because they want to take away their rights to murder another human being. I mean, do you see the sick that it's coming to? And she can't name a single other way. She cannot name a single other way that women are less, you know, that equality is compromised. Because it's not. It's not. Now, are men and women equal? I would say no, because we're not the same, right? That word equal. And when they're talking about equality, remember, they're always talking about equality of, uh, equality of outcomes, not equality of opportunity. They want the outcome to be the same. The outcome can't be the same because men and women are different. <sighs> so she's against the 50-50 until true equality is achieved, which in, by her definition, by the way, would be that women would, be, would, would have more opportunity. She wants the playing field to now be the other way. She feels like women have been held back and she wants it overcompensated now, right? That's what they want. Really, that's, that's what they're saying, by the way, when they talk about equity and equality. Just understand what the modern feminist movement is talking about is they want to make up for lost time. So they feel like women suffered at the hands of patriarchy. And now we are going to create something different. We're going to create something where guys have to sit down and shut up and women lead the charge and women are front and center and women have greater opportunities and women are chosen for jobs just by virtue of the fact that they are women because we're going to balance out all the bad stuff that happened in society back then. That's what's happening. Just know where it's coming from. Okay. Let's go to 113.33. So the last guy I dated it was a little like contentious because I only took him on a couple dates and we had probably been dating for six months. And out of those six months, I think I took him out maybe two or three times. He was very upset by that. He thought that like as many times as he took me out, I should take him out. I guess I'm just old school. I don't believe that. I think a man should be taking the woman out more. So you want equality only when it benefits you? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it's like, how do She's you reconcile not. belief? She's not. By the way, you'll hear that a lot. Um, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just playing with you. She plays that game all the time. She's not. That's her way of saying, like, that's what I really feel. She wants the equality when it is convenient. So did you hear what she said? Her instinct, remember, we are biologically driven. So her instinct is to say, well, I want the guy to lead when it comes to asking a girl out. And I want a guy to play that role initially. And I want a guy to do that. And I want that. Yeah, well, honey, then you, you don't want equality. You want the idea of equality. You want the concept of equality. But you don't want equality actually manifested because that would mean then the guy would sometimes play that role. And then sometimes you would be picking him up in your car. And maybe you'd walk around the side and open the car door for him. And maybe you'd pay that bill. And doesn't it sound weird? It sounds weird because it is weird. Because that's not how it's supposed to happen. And we all know biologically and otherwise that it doesn't, it's, 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 it doesn't sit right with us, right? 
we can have a woman get out in her high heels, walk around. Maybe the woman should walk on the, the dangerous side of the street, too, because if a car comes, then what? She's going to go ah! and be really helpful. Come on. You know, that's what we would do. We would jump. A guy would probably reach over. Get it. When you're in a car, pay attention. Pay attention, by the way, is a good judge of what kind of guy you're dealing with, ladies. And also, guys, you know you do this if you're a good guy. You're driving, something happens. What do guys do if he has to pull, uh, hit on his brakes or whatever? He goes like this. He immediately puts his hand over like to kind of block anything from happening to that woman. My husband's always like doing this if I'm in the front seat. I'm in the back seat a lot now with the baby, but he's always doing this, right? <laughs> Women aren't going to do that. You know what they're going to do? Something happens. <laughs> We're going to protect ourselves, Right. One, because it's instinctive, because we know there's a fragility to us and we're going to do this. And secondly, it's, it's not our job to protect the, the big, strong man sitting next to us. It shouldn't be. And he knows that. And we know that. Do you understand, though, just how we're wired by our nature of our biology and our anatomy that we know that we're vulnerable? Guys know that we're vulnerable because we are, right? So can you imagine a woman picking you up, driving that car, right? She's got her high heels on. She gets out struts around opens the door for you i mean you just you could just deflate all the sex hormones no on both sides Ugh, it's not interesting and she knows it she's feminine come on that woman is she knows what's up okay keep playing it deli believing in feminism believing in gender mm. equality but saying that you want the guy to take care of it you want the guy to adhere to his traditional gender roles mm -hmm during the initial courtship. That doesn't yes. make sense to me. Yeah. No, I think that's what I, I believe. I think gender <laughs> norms in the beginning make sense. The but beginning. yeah, as you get to know each other, they go away, right? Okay, so traditional oh. gender roles, when it benefits you, and then those disperse when they don't benefit <laughs> you. Oh, okay. Let me be a little more mm, careful with how I'm saying things. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, mm -hmm. I think it's up to a man to woo a woman right he should be the one that takes her out he should be the one that he should be the one that wants to do all these things for her right it's not very feminist of you but okay yeah and i respect that right but again feminism is a spectrum right <laughs> I can't. Well, all right pause it i mean before we all where's the barf bucket i did get the button back by the way that's right i didn't get a barf bucket here though i think we're gonna need one for women like this just saying in case you know you won't even see it don't worry it won't be vulgar but <laughs> Delhi's already doing it now. You don't know. He's not on camera. So again, she says the traditional gender roles are good in the beginning. And then they just should fade away. As if it's just something. Again, why? Because she believes that this is all a social construct, probably. Because, you know, the drill follows of the world told her so. So she says the traditional gender roles are good in the beginning. A guy should court you. But then they should just kind of go away as people get more comfortable. What she's saying is that she wants the traditional gender roles when the check comes to the table, when the door needs to be opened, when a, a robber is potentially coming in her front door, when something goes wrong, when uh, in all those circumstances, right, when she needs to be wooed, when she needs a gentleman, all of that, walking down a dark alley, all of those threatening situations or ones where she she really wants to feel like she has her man. And then she wants the guy to then lose all of his testosterone so that when it comes time to making decisions in the house, she can then be the head of household. So it's selective feminism. It's selective traditional gender roles. It's just wanting what's convenient. It's spoiled. It's spoiled brat behavior. Okay. And it doesn't work like that. Guys can't just lose their masculine they can't selectively tap in and be like well i'm going to be a man when it's time to woo her and i'm going to be a man when it's time to protect her but then i'm not going to be a man in my own home and i'm just going to be like yes honey whatever you want it doesn't work like that first of all you can't turn it on and off and if you did turn it on and off ladies what you would find is you were heavily attracted to that guy when he was in his masculine energy and when he lost that you would be like mur, mur, i don't want to sleep with you anymore distracted by the guy over here you're not attracted to it. That's why all these female heads of households are like, where is my cowboy? You know it. Okay. Then she gets pissed, by the way. She's about to walk out. You ready to watch this? Triggered. Oh, I need a trigger, too. We could get a trigger. Oh, yeah. I like it. Okay. Let's do this one. Eight. Then we're getting to the chat. The... I have a question for you. So... I, you mentioned, I think we, we we had spoke before the show, you said you're harsh on men. What do you mean I by that? I am harsh on men. I think, again, just my background, you know, I think 
when you're just watching men do really bad things to children all day, it tends to, yeah, tends to, and, okay, if you want to come and do a day at my job, you absolutely can. No, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Good. That's what I thought. Okay, ladies, you guys are beautiful and wonderful, and I love you all. Send me a message. Yeah, I'm sure yes, I will. Okay, bye, guys. Yeah, I want to see space. Bye. Donated nice $100. You, nice She's so annoying. I'd delete myself <laughs> if I was married to her. All right, that's Frank Castle. <laughs> all right, uh, what's the uh, number on that microphone? It's a number seven. Oh. Um, does Eric, that mean we're going you? out on a date? <gasps> okay, uh -oh. so you, you see what happens here. Yes. She was challenged. Yes. Uh, she got uncomfortable. I don't know what she does for a living that she says guys are harming children. I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't catch that part. Um, but she she was challenged repeatedly. She wasn't making any sense. You see her trying to figure out how she feels about things just in the moment, which is okay. That can happen. But then just acknowledge that. Say, hmm, I haven't really thought about that. Let me think about that for a second and get back to you. She's, she's just lost. She feels the need to defend a talking point that she can't defend because it doesn't make any sense. So she picks up and leaves. First of all, that's rude. You don't get up in the middle of the podcast and leave. Rude. Secondly, that whole like, bye, everyone. Show off attention seeking, all that. I love that the chat came in while she was ready to exit, while she was exiting and was like, I would rather blah, blah, blah than marry a girl like that. It was like music as she exited. I love it. But this is what happens all the time, by the way, when feminists are faced with facts. If someone like me sat across the table from her, it would be a disaster because I would just simply delineate all of the factual reasons why she's wrong about what she's saying. It wouldn't be an emotionally driven debate. It would just be like, that's not the gender pay gap. That's not what's happening. That's not, it's just not real. It's not grounded in anything but brainwashing what they're saying. So they leave. It happens all the time. They get uncomfortable. They get insecure about what they're saying. And then they do some beauty queen wave and leave all the time. If you like the short clip and want to watch the full episode, click here. And if you want to connect with me one-on-one -on, -one on Manect, you're going to click right here. Let's get to talking.